Hey everyone, Turd Flinging Monkey, how's it going? I'm going to avoid my usual language and shenanigans because this is an important video about a topic that needs to be shared. I've made a few videos where I say that men are superior to women both physically and mentally, to which I've received a fair bit of criticism, even within the manosphere, because of studies which have shown that while the smartest people are indeed men, the genders lie on a bell curve, with men making up the extremes on both ends, and women making up the population closest to the mean. In this way, both genders are said to be mentally equal, with men making up the smartest and dumbest among us, and women clustered in the middle. Some have gone on to say that the average woman is smarter than the average man, and it is only at the higher ends that men appear to be smarter. All of that is a deliberate lie. The studies used were deliberately structured to handicap men, or specifically, young boys, in favor of young girls because there is a brief window between the ages of 11 and 15 wherein girls have a developmental advantage over boys due to their lower brain density. You don't have to take my word for it. The studies themselves admit that the entire population used in the study consisted of either 11-year-olds in the case of the 1932 Scottish Mental Survey, or 13-year-olds in the 1971 study by Vanderbilt University, known as the Study of Mathematically Precocious Youth. These studies in 1932 and 1971, looking at 11 and 13-year-olds respectively, make up the entirety of the science behind the bell curve graphs that I'm sure you've all seen that seek to explain that women are smarter than men on average, while allowing that the smartest people are men. There have been follow-up studies based on the 1971 study in 1997 and 2006, which I'll talk about later, but I bring it up here because even modern studies use the data from the 1971 study. Why is looking at 11 or 13 year olds problematic? Well, to answer that question, let's look at a 2007 study from the National Institute of Mental Health that looked at the sexual dimorphism of brain development during childhood and adolescence. The study measured the same children, made up of 178 girls and 209 boys, from the age of 7 through the age of 19, and tracked their brain development over the entirety of adolescence, and they made some interesting discoveries that I'll share with you. Total cerebral volume was about 10% larger in males on average. Cerebral volume peaked in females at the age of 10 and a half on average. Cerebral volume peaked in males at the age of 14 and a half on average. Cerebral size decline was more pronounced in females than males after the peak. For clarification, total brain volume was calculated as the sum volumes of gray matter, white matter, and lateral ventricles. So males have 10% larger brains than females. In fact, the male brain contains more volume at all ages starting at around age 1 and becoming more pronounced during and after adolescence. However, what is really important are the ages of peak development. Females reach their peak at about the age of 11, while boys don't reach their peak until the age of 15. Meanwhile, these studies that supposedly prove that men and women are equal focus on children age 11 or 13. Both of these landmark studies were conducted deliberately during the very window wherein females would enjoy a temporary advantage over males due to their earlier peak development. As a reminder, or in case you live outside the United States, they could have easily conducted this study on teenagers as old as 17 that were still attending high school, but they chose to conduct the studies on children within the window of female advantage in order to tilt the scales towards the girls and quote unquote prove that girls were smarter than boys. And yet, despite this deliberate manipulation of the population sample being studied in order to favor girls over boys, boys still managed to be the majority of the upper quintile, although they also made up the majority of the lower quintile, most likely due to their brain's development at that time. It's entirely possible that the boys in the lower quintile caught up and surpassed the girls after their brains reached peak development around age 15. We'll never know. Now I previously mentioned that there were follow-up studies based on the 1971 study in 1997 and 2006. What's extremely telling about these follow-up studies is that they never measured IQ again. In both studies, adult participants were only measured by what they majored in during college, what they chose as their careers, what their income ranges were, etc. Neither of the follow-up studies measured the IQ of the participants again to see if these fully grown adults fit on the same bell curve as they did when they were 13. In fact, if you look at the follow-up studies and see where these children ended up as adults in terms of college majors and occupations, they're entirely average, and exactly what you would expect from the general population, including the women majoring in things like education and medicine, and the men majoring in math and science. 
Now, have there been any studies that looked outside of the window that favors females? Yes, and contrary to popular opinion, even the average man is smarter than the average woman. According to Arthur Jensen, in a paper published in 1983, where children ages 6 to 17 were measured, which includes the periods between the age 11, where females enjoy a developmental advantage over males, and after 15, when males have caught up. The average female IQ was 101, with a standard deviation of 13.55. The average male IQ was 103, with a standard deviation of 14.54. Not incredibly significant, but keep in mind that females enjoy an advantage between the ages of 11 and 15, and even despite being at a disadvantage nearly half of the years being measured, boys still had higher average IQs than girls. However, there's more. In a 2004 study, adults were measured, thus eliminating the four-year window between the ages of 11 and 15, wherein girls enjoy an advantage over boys. In this study, men scored an average five points higher than women, and the standard deviations were equal. We can go back and confirm this using average IQs by college major. Remember that the 1971 study conducted follow-up studies which measured where the children involved in the 71 study ended up majoring in, and they fell exactly within what you would expect. And when I go over these IQ differences, you'll see exactly why the researchers didn't retest the children, now adults, from the 1971 study. It really pisses me off when people who call themselves scientists operate with a clear agenda, but such is life. Anyway, let's move on and look at the study. ETS, an educational nonprofit and think tank, conducted a survey to measure the IQ levels of college majors, and when the data is presented on a scatterplot graph, it is clear that the more female dominated the college major is, the lower the average IQ of the students studying in the major. However, even the person who discovered this backpedals from concluding that men are smarter than women by citing a paper by Larry V. Hedges and Amy Noel from 1995 that looked at ASVAB testing rather than IQ testing, which proves nothing, but the urge to white knight for women is strong even among scientists with the data staring them straight in the face. Now I accessed this paper using my university library, but I can't link to it directly, but it'll provide a screen cap of the relevant chart that compared ASVAB subjects using male and female test scores along with the variation. Unsurprisingly, men scored higher in math and science, and women scored higher in reading and writing. Doesn't that mean men and women are equal? No, it doesn't. Men have objectively higher IQs on average and much higher IQs at the high end than women. I'm not saying reading and writing aren't important, but they don't somehow make women with lower IQs equally smart as men. A lot of this has to do with the connectivity differences between the male and female brain. According to a 2013 study from the University of Pennsylvania, the male brain has greater connectivity from front to back while the female has greater connectivity from side to side. According to the researchers themselves, this makes men better at learning and performing tasks, whereas women have superior memory and social skills. A telling but unintentional quote from the study is that there were fewer differences in the connectivity in children younger than 13, but the differences were more pronounced in adolescents ages 14 to 17 and in adults older than 17. So again, we see that these variations are the results of the developmental differences between boys and girls. Once the male brain reaches its peak development around age 15, it functions differently from the female brain. And studies show that adult men have higher IQs and blow women right out of the water in subjects like math and science. So in conclusion, men are smarter than women, period. Now, why would I say IQ, math, and science is more important than things like memory, reading, and writing, which females excel in? When you compare modern civilization to ancient or primitive civilizations, what is the difference? Or to take it a step further, what separates man from the animals? Animals have memories, and while animals can't read or write language, reading and writing goes back to at least 4000 BC in ancient Mesopotamia. What allowed for things like technology, including even basic technology like the wheel, math, and science? Now, comparing modern civilization with our ubiquitous technology to ancient Mesopotamia, or any primitive culture that lacked a robust appreciation for math and science, which is superior and which is inferior? Which is better, which is worse? Which would you rather live in? Now I'm sure there are some pseudo-intellectuals out there that hold this notion of things being different but equal, and that nothing is objectively better or worse than anything else. I've actually had someone tell me that a human being is not superior to a slug, and I'm sure that if you think that way, you will never accept that men are not only physically superior, but also mentally superior, and thus objectively superior to women. 
If you want to hold this idea of different but equal, you're an idiot. They have things like IQ tests for a reason, and the results of every honest study are crystal clear. If you want to continue to point to studies with an obvious bias towards girls by limiting the population to undeveloped boys, then that only shows that your ideology is more important than facts and reality. So that's all I have to say about this. Boys rule and girls drool. I'm out. Peace.